This presentation is entitled Using PPI, Public and Patient Involvement in Service Research Prioritisation. My name is Dr Lorraine Crowley. I'm a senior clinical psychologist with Acquired Brain Injury Ireland. Over the past five years, our research requests have been expanding and therefore our ethics committee highlighted the need to develop a strategy for 2020 to 2024 regarding research priorities for the service. To do this, we decided to look at research service trends over the past five years to conduct a research prioritization exercise or an RPE to set our focus and then to incorporate a PPI approach to inform this process. When we reviewed service trends over the previous five years, two key factors stood out in terms of our research prioritization going forward. The first is regarding the participants. Unsurprisingly, they tend to be people who've experienced an ABI, and that includes um, clients who have accessed our service and also family members or partners of clients. However, beyond being participants, they are not usually included in any other part of the research process. The second trend which emerged was the volume of psychological research which is published through the service. While this is encouraging in terms of the contribution of this aspect of ABI research, there are other areas which also require our promotion and advocacy into the future. We then moved into looking at the actual research prioritisation project, which again was to recognise the key priorities for the service to ensure clients and families were involved throughout this project and also to take into account the fact that the impact of COVID-19 restrictions meant that, that we would be unable to meet people face to face during this process. When we conducted a literature review on how best to carry out an RP in the context of a brain injury service, we found a number of methods to guide our process. Two of the main methods that came through were global evidence mapping, which looks at generating topics through stakeholder engagement and is re research and literature review based, and the World Cafe method, which is a social constructivist based approach, which incorporates in-person focus groups. In order to adapt the process to take into account the COVID-19 restrictions, we developed an online questionnaire through consultation with families and clients. We trialled a pilot with them and then when we had a finalised questionnaire, we distributed this to all stakeholders. Our catchphrase with this to encourage participation was five questions in five minutes and you can see the outline of the questions as indicated on the slide. 259 people completed the online questionnaire, 50% of which worked in a service where they work directly with people with a brain injury, followed by family members, those who have experienced a brain injury themselves, and then those working in research and academia, and then a small number of participants were people who work in services where brain injury isn't the primary presentation, but where they're interested in the area. On the questionnaire, we asked participants to rate five priorities in order of preference for what research should focus on. The number one priority which came through from respondents was what rehabilitation works best, followed by access to services, information and support for family and friends, understanding more about social issues such as homelessness and addiction, and then information for those involved in funding services. The additional topics highlighted were living with a brain injury, diagnosis of brain injury and differentiation of diagnosis, public awareness, employment, residential options, child and adolescent acquired brain injury, mental health and studies on prevalence. Looking at questions that need to be answered in the coming years, we were asked to focus on the impact of the ABI the role of rehabilitation and the pathways and services in terms of accessibility. The fifth question and final question about utilising clients and families time and support in a better way in our research process really underlined the need for a PPI approach to develop advocacy and empowerment to have input from key stakeholders such as families and clients at the initial stages of research and this would include throughout then 
the research design, the data collection and analysis, and the presentation of research findings. As one person commented, it's acting as co-researchers at all stages, all on an equal footing. When we condensed all the feedback we have received, it resulted in these four key research priorities going forward, effective rehabilitation, access to services, facts and figures, and the impact of brain injury. The outcomes of the research prioritization exercise has meant that we're going to look at continued involvement of lived experience members on our ethics committee, from now on, all research projects must demonstrate on their ethics application how they will use a PPI approach. And researchers are encouraged to discuss PPI options with the service if they want support on understanding how to incorporate it into the research project. A number of key recommendations came through in terms of our consultations with clients and family members generally about research. They said that researchers do need to consider practical elements such as the font size and volume of information in information sheets and consent forms that are used in brain injury research and also consider the language involved. One client gave an example of using the word thinking instead of cognitive. They also said that we need to start reconsidering the common exclusion criteria which is often put forward in research studies in brain injury such as research which excludes those who have aphasia and those with um, significant cognitive difficulties. The wider recommendations that we receive from clients and family members regarding research and brain injury is that they highlighted the importance that the research that we're involved with does impact in practice. They noted that a key question that researchers need to be able to answer for us is can it influence policy development and funding? Clients and families also noted that research needs to connect more with the general public and general public awareness of brain injury and go beyond some of the professional forums that it's usually presented in. Clients also highlighted to us that they do have skill sets that can be utilised throughout the research process. As one person commented, see us as more than participants. I would like to thank those who took part in our research prioritisation group, Grania McGettrick, our policy and research manager, who was the group lead, Kevin Hughes, assistant psychologist, and Leanne Brennan, rehabilitation assistant. And we would give our heartfelt thanks to all the clients and families who were involved throughout this process. The full report is available at this website address. Thank you.